Well, if you watched the video about the Equinox high pressure fuel pump, um, which I'll put a little banner link thing right here. Um, if you watch the whole thing, you notice the end got cut off. I actually thought that was YouTube cutting my video off at an hour long, but no, it was just an issue when I exported the video on my laptop. For some reason, it didn't export the full thing. Um, so you guys actually missed out on about 13 minutes. So here's the ending of it with the new fuel pump from GM, the AC Delco fuel pump, um, where we get a known good on this car, what this P0191 test should actually look for or look like on uh, this condition one test. So thanks for watching and uh, hope you enjoy the rest of this. So here's our aftermarket pump that we've got took out. I don't know what brand it is. There is that part number on it. I'm, I asked the customer and he, th he didn't know. He thought it was a standard, but couldn't remember because he actually bought it a couple weeks ago. Um, maybe even longer than that. But this is the aftermarket one that I took out. And when you take these out, always pull the roller out of there give it a good inspection make sure there's no pitting or nothing on it this one looks fine um, also check this for wear uh, you can see that one's kind of a little polished on the very end there where it's been rubbing but it's not scored up or nothing like that so this one looks completely fine if this was all chewed up i would be looking in there at the cam also but but since this roller looks fine well it's probably not going to come across on camera the same because you're going to be seeing the reflections of all the little specks of dust and stuff in the air that's sticking to the oil but yeah that that thing's completely fine and so just just reach in there a good one well you can just grab it with your finger and slide it out sometimes if they may have like some uh, carbon built up in there it may come out a little harder than that but you should be able to just reach in and move it with your finger now here's our new GM pump um, this one is part number 1269-1097 now there is two different versions of this pump um, that I found out for this motor because this motor could be E85 or not. So there's two different pumps depending on if you've got E85 or not. And this one is an E85 car. Um, go around to the gas door, we've got an E85 gas cap. Uh, there's also a RPO code for that. Uh, it starts with an F, I can't remember exactly what it is, but this one's an e for e85 i don't know what this is for whether it's e85 or not it doesn't matter uh, because the problem is has nothing to do with it being e85 um, i've definitely seen this issue with a car that wasn't e85 but this pump is for e85 um, there's also an ac delco number here and I'll give you the, the part number to the other version of this pump for regular gas also. And then the other thing that I always replace when doing these is the high pressure fuel line. Um, these things are by GM one time use. Once you tighten this down, you crack it loose a second time, it's, it's done. You replace it. They say these fittings kind of almost are a crimp type fit so they do not want these reused a second time and this is is cheap um let's see let's actually see how much that cost let me get the receipt here and block off the uh important stuff that you don't need to see so we've got a pipe. List price is $85. Uh, 
um, or no, list price is $121, selling price is $85. If your customer is going to complain over $85 or $122, something like that, you know, they're not your customer. They're, they're, you don't want cheap customers. <laughs> they're always a pain. Uh, the pump itself, it was $235, list price was uh, $336. So, yeah, this this is not that much total on this was uh, 32012 plus taxes now that is a wholesaler's price um, so yeah you can expect if you go into the dealer and you're not a wholesaler you're gonna be paying the list price or some dealers may even mark it up above list price either way a, a line that's a hundred twenty dollars it's not that bad and that line's actually went up that line used to be like sixty dollars or forty five dollars something like that so prices are definitely going up but when you're doing work and you've got a work order that's been done on this vehicle if this vehicle later burns down and um, you don't have this line and they think it was burnt down because of a gas leak well they're gonna say it's probably because you didn't put this line on there so uh, cover yourself put the line on it if your customer don't want to pay the money for the line don't do the job there's plenty of other jobs in the world to do so I'm gonna get this thing all put back together and we'll see what the new pump does I got the new pump put on we got the same scan data kind of pulled up here on the scan tool and just doing my little drive around the block here so that it can run all these monitors and then we'll pull up to a stop and let it run its self test um, I haven't cleared any codes so we've still got the the PO191 and the PO172 code set um, we are about out of gas but what the gas level shouldn't matter and as you can see on the scan data everything still looks relatively the same our desired low side fuel pressure is actually down at 45 for some reason I'm not sure if that's just due to the uh, engine being more up to temperature or or what I, I don't I don't know it could be a result of a good pump I suppose I have no idea um, but either way let's pull up here and stop and now we need to wait about that 12 and a half seconds and uh, what we're gonna see is the fuel pressure desired is going to drop to zero again and we're gonna see our high side pressure uh, from a fuel pressure sensor on the rail is gonna drop and it's gonna get pretty close to our desired fuel pressure on the low side um, which now has increased to 58 which is about what we've seen before sitting still um, you can see our uh, regulator command is at 32 we're going to see that go to zero degrees because at zero degrees the pump is not on at any anything so right now you can think the pump is on for 32 degrees and that's the the pressure being built so we're going to lower the pressure by opening up the intake of the fuel pump to push all that fuel pressure back to the low side and this is going to be really quick when it actually does it it's going to drop it check it for a few seconds and then it's going to pass and, and come right back up so hopefully we're getting close to our 10 seconds here okay so there it is it's already done it there's our zero backup I did have to drive it back around uh, just to get it to do it but let's let's see you can see that we're our desired fuel pressure right here went to zero our pressure regulator command dropped to zero our fuel pressure right here dropped really close to zero in relation to where it is right now 
Um, so we can basically say that this system now is working completely fine. So take me a screenshot of that for records because that's a fix. So hopefully now after this much longer video than I anticipated it being, uh, you have a better understanding of what this pump is doing with this engine and how if you see this in the future, you can kind of quickly determine what's going on with it based off of these data pids and just getting it to, to do these tests, getting the criteria to make it run the test, you can easily duplicate the issue sometimes. Um, and now you can kind of see like what it kind of means in those uh, setting criteria and then what the DTC sets at, like the condition one, what that actually means and how it functions and stuff like that. And easily, really just easily determine that this aftermarket pump was the issue with this. I, I don't know why they originally replaced the pump on this. I didn't even think to ask him, I don't think. Uh, we was in a hurry that day and just quickly ran in, checked it, and I seen what it was duplicated it. I'm like, yeah, I know what that is. And uh, I wanted to make a video on it because this isn't an isolated thing. This pump wasn't a Delphi pump. This was some other aftermarket pump. I know the pump that I had an issue with was Delphi pumps. And I know Phil had Delphi pumps in the vehicle that he was diagnosing and had this issue with. But this isn't necessarily just a, a Delphi pump issue. Um, I, the guy that put this pump in thinks it was, he knows it was from O'Reilly's and he thinks it was a standard pump, but he couldn't remember for sure. But hopefully now you can kind of understand this system a little bit better. Uh, and you can actually have two different pumps in GMs. This engine uses a normally closed pump on that inlet, but some of the other engines, I think like the, the V8, uses a normally open. So when you unplug that solenoid, if it's normally closed, it's going to go max pressure. But if you unplug it and fuel pressure drops, you've got a normally open pump, and it's actually using that solenoid to close the pump and make it build pressure. So as a quick, easy test, you can do with GDI pumps to know which operating system it is. Is it going to go max pressure when you unplug it, or is it going to reduce pressure when you unplug it? And that can really help you develop a thinking process of what's going on with this pump or with, with these pumps when you have an issue like this. So thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys later.